Alright guys, so today we are going to be talking about a movie that I haven't talked about in months, and that is Batman Death in the Family. The sequel slash prequel to the Batman Under the Red Hood animated movie. And this movie follows our main character, Jason Todd, and how he dies. Or doesn't die. Because the choice is up to you. Because this is an interactive movie. And, uh... That was definitely really interesting. Um, that was, I was unsure about. I definitely would have preferred like a regular movie, um, but the interactive part of it was definitely really interesting and actually kind of made it fun just seeing all these different stories. Um, so anyway, this movie released early October, and now I finally had the chance to watch it, and it was really good. Like, like I said, I didn't really know what to expect going into it with it being an interactive movie, but I actually really, really enjoyed it. Um, so now, guys, today we are going to break this movie down, go over all of the different possible paths and routes you can take within this story. Um... So, just so you know, this is full-on spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, then you probably don't want to watch this video, unless you don't plan on watching it, then, uh, welcome on in here anyway. Um, so, basically, the, the movie starts off with the classic part from Batman Under the Red Hood, where, you know, Batman and Robin, they're chasing after the Joker, and Batman tells Jason to stay, but then he doesn't, and Jason goes after the Joker, but then he gets beat up, and then he gets blown up, and boom, he's dead. Or is he? Because then that's when your first choice pops up, and you have the choice to either um, let Robin die, um, Robin cheats death, or Batman saves Robin. Um, so the first one I chose, of course, was Robin dies, because that's like the way it actually happened in the comics. And, you know, the, I think this was probably the longest storyline because no other uh, interactive choices popped up during this storyline. Um, and it was definitely an interesting one, but I think overall it was pretty much just a summarized, shortened version of what we saw in Batman Under, Under the Red Hood. Um, so it's probably better to just watch the full movie to get the full experience, but this was a really good kind of summarization of what happened there, especially since I haven't seen that movie in years, so it was a nice reminder of how good that movie is, because it really is good. Then after that, I went back to the, uh, first choice, and I like how easy it was, like, once your storyline ends, it pops up with a little selection of you can go back to the different choices that you made, so that was really cool. Um, so I decided to go back, and I chose Robin Cheats Death. And this results in Jason surviving, and Batman also survives. But Jason is all scarred up, and he's wearing all these bandages now. And now he kind of just realizes, and he sees through the fakeness, and the fake smiles, and all the lies. And he realizes that he was better off before um, he came into the Wayne family, and before he had a family. Um, so he runs away, and then he basically becomes Hush, even though they keep calling him Robin, because, I mean, he is technically Robin. Um, so he goes off, and he just starts murdering all these villains. So he's still fighting crime, but he's he's murdering all of them. Like, he murdered Black Mask, Cheetah, the Riddler. So that was crazy. Um, and then things get even crazier. This is honestly one of my favorite storylines. I wish it wasn't so short. Um, because then we see, uh, when Jason's at, like, his secret top hideout, um, on a rooftop somewhere, Talia Al Ghul confronts him, and then basically tells him about Bruce Wayne's son, Damian Wayne, and that she can't take care of him or anything anymore, so she wants Jason to take care of him, and at first he's super reluctant, like, no, I, I'm I'm freaking hush. I don't have time to take care of a baby. But then he realized I could use this to my advantage. So then this storyline ends off with Jason just saying that he's going to raise Damien um, to hate Bruce and so that he can d take on Batman and all that stuff. So it sounded really cool. Um, and honestly, I wish the storyline didn't end off there. It did. Um, so that kind of sucked. Um, but now moving on to the final storyline, which was kind of the biggest one because it had so many different choices, so many different paths here. And this was Batman Saves Robin. 
and this starts off with Batman saving Robin, but then in the process, Batman actually dies. Um, but he pr makes Jason promise him one thing before he dies, that Jason will not kill the Joker, and he will stay strong and use this pain to stay strong. And then it pops up with a choice. You can either kill the Joker or capture the Joker. So, of course, first I chose kill the Joker. Um, so then we see Jason. He goes on as a hero. Dick Grayson becomes Batman. But one time, Jason goes in this diner. Um, and then there's this guy sitting there at the bar. And he says that he knew Batman. He fought alongside him. And then he tells him a joke. And Jason finds that joke familiar. And that's when he realizes that's the Joker wearing makeup to look like a regular guy. And, um, so then, uh, Jason says something that makes the Joker realize that's Jason. And then all of a sudden, Jason just grabs a knife or something and just stabs him in the eye. And then the Joker's dead. So that was honestly really cool to see. I loved seeing that. That was really, really cool. Um, but then the cops show up. He attacks them. And then basically... Jason becomes Red Robin, which is kind of like a darker version of Robin, and it's kind of like the Red Hood thing again, um, and also the Hush thing, where he goes off and he just starts killing all the villains, um, until he gets to this battle with Two-Face, which was really cool to see in this movie as well, and Jason actually gets almost killed, but then that is when he's saved, he's saved by this little boy named Tim Drake, um, who convinces him not to kill Two-Face, and that he needs to reform. So then they go on. Red Robin is reformed. He's a hero once again. And then now we have this new crime-fighting duo of Jason Todd as the newly reformed Red Robin. And Tim Drake now becomes Bat Kid, which was really interesting. You would have thought it would be the other way around because since Tim Drake is usually a Robin, why wouldn't he be Robin and then Jason is the new Batman? Because, you know... Jason's older so I don't know but it was still really cool to see I really like that storyline uh, and then the final one here um, is when we go back to Batman saves Robin Batman dies and all that stuff but instead we choose Batman no not Batman because he's dead Jason captures the Joker so this was a really interesting one as well but it was also really weird um, because Jason becomes Red Hood once again, um, but he doesn't kill people. That's what's different this time. He isn't killing people. He just wants to get the attention of the Joker. That's why he's become the Red Hood, because it's based off of the Red Hood that the Joker used to be um, before he became the Joker. And he basically gets his attention, and then we get into this battle between Red Hood and the Joker. And that's when Joker reveals that... Jason actually did kill all those people and he was just repressing the pain and repressing those memories so he really is literally insane here um so that's crazy um but then Jason just kills him anyway um there was another choice to not kill him I, I didn't take the time to go through that um but then we see Jason once again on another rooftop getting confronted by Talia al Ghul but this time, it turns out she has resurrected Batman with the Lazarus Pit. And then we get this quick battle between Batman and, and Jason. Um, Jason ends up winning and stabs Batman. But then right before Batman dies, he pulls out this bomb and blows them all up. And all three of them blow up. And that's it. That That's the last storyline that I watched. Uh, so overall, guys, this was a really good movie. This was way better than I thought it'd be. Like I said, I wasn't sure what to think with the whole interactive part of it, but I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I actually really did. And I think it's kind of cool and kind of funny how, like, it doesn't really matter what path you choose. Jason Todd is just a dark guy, and he's going to kill people no matter what. It, it doesn't matter if... He dies if he survives, if Batman dies, if he kills the Joker or not. Jason's going to become a murderer. And, you know, I think that's kind of cool that even with all these different things in the storyline, Jason is still the same character and he still has that darkness and that pain inside of him. So I, I really loved seeing that. I really did. Um, so guys, this was a really cool movie, um, uh, but let me know down in the comments below, what did you think about Batman, Death in the Family, the interactive movie, what did you think about all the interactive parts of it, and what was your favorite storyline and path to take? 
So, thank you guys so much for watching. Please drop like you enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button so I can keep you up to date on everything that goes on in the DC life.